Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go. I'm disgusted. After all the things my mom has done, this is the one that hurts the most. My parents were 15 when they had me. They got married and they lasted for 5 years because my father cheated. My mom tried everything in her power to get me to hate my dad. She told me that my daddy was a predator. He sold drugs, dope, helped his uncle run some sketchy business sometimes, and constantly in shootouts. This was all true as my dad was more unfortunate than my mom said of the family so the streets were his life. Even though he was like that I never stopped loving my dad. How can you love your father when he cheated on me and ruined our family? It was something I constantly heard in my childhood. I know cheating is wrong but I honestly feel like my dad used cheating as an out to get away from my mom. I always loved my daddy. And he was my favorite parent because at an early age, I knew my mom was crazy. She's a spoiled brat then, and she's a spoiled brat now. My husband said my mom has a personality of someone who would falsely accuse someone of assault and rape when she can't get her way. I hate my mother. She ruined my childhood. She ruined my wedding, but she never ruined the relationship I had with my dad. I remember the time when I was six years old and my dad went to prison for the first time and my mom threw a celebration, then threw a funeral, when he got out when I was 11. It repeats. He went to jail when I was 13. My mom threw a party and then threw a funeral when he got out when I was 15. He went to jail when I was 17 and got some months later and yet again my mom threw a party and a funeral. I had my wedding when I was 18 and I invited my dad. I wanted him to walk me down the aisle and my mom lost her mind. That's a long story for another time though. And that's when I told my dad to quit that life. I was pregnant and he was going to be a granddad and I needed him. He promised me he would quit and he kept that promise. My dad was my everything. He was my daughter's BFF and he had a beer with my husband every Monday. Seven months ago when I found out I was pregnant again, my dad died. He missed a date he had planned with my daughter and he wasn't answering his phone so I went to go check on him. I will never forget that image. At his actual funeral, my mother was in the back in all black, crying like she cared. And when we were alone, she looked me dead in the eye and told me that she's happy that she called him a racial slur for black people and a racial slur for Mexican people. He was half black, half Mexican. She told me she was happy that he was finally in hell. Let's just say I didn't leave that church without some of her hair in my hand. And after all of that, my stupid self let my psychopathic mother back in my life because my stupid hormones wanted a parent. I wish I can go back in time and kick my stupid self in the chest. Now my mom didn't show up yesterday. I was surprised she didn't, but I should have known she was up to something. Every Saturday we visit my dad's grave just to talk. We bring him flowers and as I know my dad burns a lot of bridges. So I'm one of the few family members who still do that for him. I missed a few weeks due to what happened in my last post. So I was ready to explode on how his ex is a lunatic. My daughter was so excited just to talk to grandpa because she hadn't talked to him in a few weeks. I was in my wheelchair being pushed by my husband while my daughter was on my lab. We were excited, but my mom couldn't handle the fact that I was ignoring her on purpose, so she wrote I'm sorry Addison on his tombstone. She also smashed his pictures and things that I left out for him like candles and some of his cars from his collection. How do I know that my mom did it? Because I took a picture of it and asked why she did this and her reply was that was the only way I know how to get you to respond to me. Um, by disrespecting my dad's grave, I have stopped crying. Now the tears are gone. 
Now, I am so ready to curve stomp her. So we were waiting for the cops because apparently to Google that's illegal. Update. My mom has been arrested, according to my stepdad. Yes, she is married, she is on her third marriage. And that stupid witch thinks she has a right to tell me how to live mine. While she was being taken, she punched a cop and clawed another in the face. She'll be looking at some fun jail time. Hey guys, it's Crown. Hope you're doing well. I started a brand new channel called That One Story. It'll mostly include stories coming from different subreddits, but will definitely include some entitled people getting their comeuppance. I'll leave the link in the description below. So please subscribe to the channel to listen to the latest stories, cause I'll make sure to post videos on a daily basis. Thank you and have a great day. We will call the couples to Parpara. Parpara is a witch, literally. She took up some religion they call themselves witches. Parpara love bombed a very smart but socially inept friend of mine named Stuart. Stu is super quiet, super smart, actual rocket scientist and was smitten with Parpara. Parpara was smitten with Stu's house, money and so on. No amount of telling Stu would stop him. He was under Parpara's spell. She moved in with him, took over, cut off all his friends and gaslighted the hell out of him. Four years later, he sees a light. Time for Barbara to move out. And she flat out refuses. Stu has a very valuable china collection inherited from his great-grandparents. Barbara has always wanted that china, since a royal family somewhere has it sit like it. And Stu had to lock it up in a valuable safe since she breaks things when she doesn't get her way. When her eviction notice time was up, we helped pack up Barbara's stuff, stack the boxes in the garage in her parking place and change the house locks. The evil genius in our punch got a bright idea. We took a bunch of warning, extremely fragile stickers from my shop, stuck them on the boxes and wrote to China on the boxes with a big black sharpie. Barbara comes out with her sister and another harpy witch friend, sees the boxes in the garage and blows up. Argument in the yard. She can't get in the house. She starts losing it. When she gets in her SUV, she sees the boxes again. Backs up and rams him so hard, it broke through the wall into a storage room behind. She's not done. She backs up again and rams the boxes slash wall again. We are already on the phone with the police and it's God's on home surveillance camera. She rammed her own stuff. The cops weren't amused wanting to know why boxes were mislabeled. We said we reuse the boxes from Stu's original move-in since they were handy. One officer wasn't amused with Barbara, said to fill out reports and actually laughed once it was all over. He's the one that said something is an evil genius. I wish I'd thought of this in my divorce since his wife burned slash cut off virtually everything he owned. Barbara has since attempted to break into the garage or house three times in the past two weeks and the police have camera footage. What's left of her stuff was delivered to a storage locker that one month's rent was paid on. And no, we didn't repox any of it. It's in the same state she left it in the garage, drywall, wood splinters, insulation and all. Stu is spending a lot of time with us catching up, trading and seeing X stories. Smiling more than I've seen since he met Barbara, and I couldn't care less where Barbara is, and I hope it's awful with her friends barking at the back door constantly. Edit by request for more information. She is the little sister of another guy in my friend group since high school. Every class has a pretty girl in it. Barbara was the pretty girl in the whole high school, and the meanest witch in high school as well. A spill witch with a B. Thank young Bam Anderson before the beehive here and fake things, or maybe even better looking. Her brother is tall, well built, naturally light blonde, and has statuesque features. Everyone in that family is crazy attractive, but Barbara just won the genetics lottery. The hard partying, selfish lifestyle hasn't treated her well over time, so she doesn't have the visceral effect on everyone she used to. She absolutely could stomp everyone in the room and their tracks was gaping mouses in her twenties. 
But now creeping into her 50s, she barely gets a notice and she hates that. So with a bookworm astronomy, has a doctorate in astrophysics, I don't think he knew girls existed in high school. Way too busy trying to get scholarships to college. Stu plays guitar, has a history degree, has a computer science degree, loves dogs and is absolutely no drama ever, and takes mice outside to release them because he can't be mean or kill anything. Stu's first girlfriend was a little plain when you first met her, but got a lot more attractive the longer you knew her. Just a great person. Ovarian cancer got her about 7 years ago, not long after she was diagnosed. The tumor ate into a major artery and it ruptured. She died quite suddenly and we rode up that mountain with him. Then he met Barbara while still heartbroken and lonely. Barbara, on the other hand, has been married a couple times, cheated on those husbands, had a couple kids she dumped off on the fathers, was into the crystal gribbon hippie new age thing, then went full black magic or something a few years back and declared herself a witch queen or something. We weren't around much since Barbara wouldn't allow it. She's had affairs with two of her family members' husbands and one of the father-in-laws that I know about through her brother and I don't listen 99% of the time. A string of DUIs for, I think, drug position, nothing is ever her fault, typical narcissist in the textbook sense. Her kids won't see her, her exes and brother have restraining orders against her and you get the idea. She managed to get her parents' entire estate signed over to her and had run through about $400,000 of inheritance, was broke when she met Stu again, still looked like she had money, but was broke to the point of desperation. What's funny, the PMW SUV she rammed her stuff with was a first day present from Stu a few months back. Now it's all crashed up in the front end to the point the front doors don't want to open. This is the same woman that paid $30,000 for a horse, despite nowhere to board it. No experience with horses, just saw it and it was a color she liked. She was trying to keep it in a one-car garage, which she never cleaned when animal control got involved. Some horse rescue place took the animal until it could be sold to a good home, which it did. Sale price was generous according to the people that knew horses in the market, Sale price $7,000. She paid $30,000 for it and wouldn't admit she got conned. She had the gal to tell my wife she wasted her life. My wife has two doctorates. An MD slash surgeon and psychology doctorate. Works mainly with children and some with disabled veterans. Does not pay much compared to high-end plastic surgery in Barbara. Thinks working at the VA and children's hospital is a waste of time and effort. Barbara says poor people slash disabled vets are losers and shouldn't get what they can't pay for. Never mind, I'm a disabled vet myself and I paid my VA services with back broken in 7 places. Lost both knees, one hip, three quarters of one lung, shoulder and ankle. And I'm an entitled leech on the system. Back surgery is how I met my wife. She helped me get my legs working dropped me as a patient after about 4 months so she could try dating me. We bonded over bringing the hospital kids out to spend time on my farm. So, as you might guess, I am not on Team Barbara. Her brother Ron is the best guy you would ever want to meet, hardworking, family-oriented, honest as the day is long. While women threw themselves at him from all the directions, it's actually funny the only person in the world who's romantically interested in his wife doesn't even acknowledge there are other women in the world interested in him. She's a great person too, has her own business, is a super mom, helps my wife with the foster slash at risk kids groups, and so on. Barbara hates her brother's wife, calls her Miss Perfect, if it's Mrs. Perfect actually pretty accurate, and she's constantly spreading rumors that she's cheating, stealing money and so on. We all think it's a narcissistic projection. For the first time in about 5 years, Barbara is no contact. And while discussing this, we all feel there is a huge weight lifted. We'll see how our luck holds. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.